YouTube crew! It is Multiplier here, starting off with a sit down. Basically, in a recent video that Dead Mouse gone in ahead and did for, he's basically made a course for Masterclass, a music production course. In the promotional video, which chances are you've seen because it's got like a million views on YouTube alone, and they've done loads of advertising. In the video, he went ahead and said, and I quote, using an SSL G series compressor on a dance music kick drum makes no sense whatsoever. Say what, but it's so expensive and all the pros use it. So it, it must be the, it must be, must make sense. We want about dead mouse, you lunatic. Let me explain. And this is something I entirely agree with. If you're making dance music that's designed to be played at a club or a festival or some form of live fun time environment, then there's absolutely no point in spending loads and loads of money on vintage analog compressors or vintage analog e cues because the difference between say a, a vintage analog real life compressor and a normal compressor in your software or say the difference between a, a normal Ableton EQ8 and a Neve compressor the difference is so small that you're just not going to hear it in a dance music environment yes if you're listening on headphones or monitors and you're good at listening because you're a, a music producer then you will hear the difference between say a, an expensive EQ and a cheaper one or, or let's say a medium priced EQ and an expensive one but to a normal person at a, a fun time party nighttime environment or maybe even just a person banging banging the tune in the car doing the doing the driving they're not going to be hearing a difference. It's just like wine. Most people can just about tell the difference between a four pound bottle of wine and a nine pound bottle of wine, but they can't tell the difference between a nine pound bottle of wine and a million pound bottle of wine, or, or even a 20 pound bottle of wine, or a 2000, or, a, or any other number above nine. Nine's the magic number, I reckon, but you know what I mean, right? You can tell the difference between the cheapest in a category, such as wine, and the medium priced benchmark, say nine pounds, but unless you're a wine expert and you're drinking in optimal circumstances, you're not going to tell the difference between that nine pound or that nine dollar bottle of wine and that 900 pound or dollar bottle of wine. And if you don't believe me, buy a lot of wine and drink it all. In fact, that's what I'm going to do after this because that's a good idea. Good idea, Multiplier. But yes, the same applies to music. Just like how most people in most situations can't tell the difference between an MP3 and a WAV, a good quality MP3, I should say, and a WAV, most people could not tell the difference between a built compressor or a built-in EQ and a more expensive vintage analog sort of equivalent. It's only when you're listening to the right sort of source material on the right sort of headphones and you also have good ears that you can possibly tell the difference between these sort of quality things. If you want more proof because maybe you drank all the wine that I recommended you drink and then because you drank so much wine you forgot why you were drinking the wine because it was a metaphor or maybe you just want audio related proof then look up the concept behind golden ears. Golden ears like ears, but made of, like dead mouse, but, but with gold. Golden ears, golden ears, dead mouse has ears. There's probably something there. But yes, the idea behind that is that most people in most normal situations, even with expensive speakers, can't tell the difference between the highest quality audio and just pretty good quality audio unless their ears have been trained. If you train your ears and you have the right listening equipment, then it's been absolutely scientifically proven that you can tell the difference in audio quality between say medium and the best, but that 99.99% of people using pretty much all your normal audio gear simply cannot. So I suppose the key distinction here is that there is a difference objectively between this higher quality of audio, such as a Neve EQ or a fancy SSL G series compressor and normal quality stuff. But as human beings with arms and eyes and ears and, and, and body parts and stuff, we listen to music subjectively. So even though there may be an objective difference in quality between two things, that doesn't mean that almost anyone's going to actually hear it. And we are, at least most of you watching this, are making dance music. Dance music for the club, for the parties, boom, -tsh, boom, -tsh, boom, -tsh, boom, -tsh. really loud, lots of fun intoxicated etc and when you're raving out you're having a fist pump you're you're doing 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 your dub steps and your other dances your technos trappity traps, future basses and so on. When you're doing all that and you're listening to music on these crazy big speakers that are overdriven because the DJ's being a lunatic, when you're doing all that and you're listening to the music through a big speaker system in a crazy reverby room and it's just a bunch of chaos everywhere. Oh, there's a girl over there, that's distracting too. You're simply not going to be hearing the small difference in quality between a, a normal EQ or a normal compressor in your DAW and a fancy, expensive, vintage-y, analog -y sort of thing. Such as the SSL G Series compressor that Death Bounce was on about. I mean, he has loads of them. And that's coming from Dead Mouse, who has a six or maybe even a seven figure studio. It's crazy. He has all the expensive toys. And even he, even he, Eve, Eve, spa words. Even he said that. And so I'm convinced because 
Well, I was convinced before Dead Mouse said it because I think about things because I'm I'm a scientist. Oh, the screensaver went on. But it's nice to know that Dead Mouse is spreading the right knowledge too. Interesting things, interesting things. Uh yeah. There's a box over there that's gonna get opened in the next video. And uh next video, next video, people, there will be a box. In fact, teaser alert, teaser alert. I never do this. I never do this. I never tease the forthcoming, is that the right word? Forthcoming videos, but I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to open a box. There is a box that is going to get opened next video. So I'm going to record that, the unboxing video and like a first impressions tomorrow. And then it'll probably be up in a few days. I never do teasers, so that's that's quite exciting. Um, so yeah, that, that is a box. Look forward to that. Look forward to the box, everyone. I'm gonna put you back box. Box, you sit over here. Don't go anywhere, box. I love you. I love you. Ah, drop the box and it says fragile on it. That was a, no, don't do that. Uh, it's all right. I think I know what's inside. Uh, can you still hear me? I think so. I think I know what's inside the box, so I don't actually, actually think it's that fragile if it is what I think it is, but we'll find out together in the next video. I'm out of breath just walking from uh, the box location to here, so that's uh, good. I have been Multiplier, and this has been a video quoting Deb Mouse and then talking about the thing that he'd gone ahead and said, and, and also taking it, and I mean, if the internet is for anything, it's for seeing something without any context behind it, and then putting it in your own context, and then making up the rest. That's what the internet's for. And I think we nailed it. High five! Yes. Catch you guys on the flippity flip. Flippity flippity. Flippity flip.